Hi folks, my name is Dima um, and I do fishing, usually 50% on a kayak and the rest of it is off the shore. And I just wanted to show you my setup in terms of how I transport kayak, how I uh, control kayak, I got the motor, electric one and other things that might be interesting to you. And I know a few folks ask me to show them my setups, especially the motor setup. And that's what I'm going to show you today. And here is my kayak. I just came from Discovery Bay in California. You see it's covered with this special kind of um, protective cover. And I'm using this so-called Rhino racks, which are pretty good. I've had them for a couple of years. I just bought this crossbars separate and the Rhino rack. And the Rhino rack comes with the straps as well, which go inside the car. It's all very secure. And this is the front side of it. So they're slightly different on the back and the front. These are the wheels I used to move my kayak. I stick them into the uh, rear uh, openings inside. I forgot the name of that play, of those things. But, um, so it pretty much goes like this. And I also use these little clamps uh, to control it. So when I stick this part inside, I go from the top and I fix it like this so they don't fall off. Overall, they work well, strong. Problem is, uh, when the kayak is in the water, it's really difficult to stick these things inside because this is lightweight, it's plastic, it floats, the wheels. So sticking it from the inside is very difficult. Um, I have to usually pull it up on the, on the dock and leave the kayak's back hanging, then I stick it inside. Uh, my kayak is called Hoodoo and the model is Tempest. It's a pretty new brand, uh, at least when I bought it about a year ago. Um, but they gave you like, great features for the price of a, I would say, lower priced kayak. I think I paid around 1200 and I ordered it in Texas. And let me show you what's inside while it's still attached to the rack. So I typically put the chair like this in the back. I use the straps to fix the rods and the disassembled paddles. And they're very sturdy. There is no reason for me to do anything else here. It just holds it well, especially with the cover on. And the back of it, as you can see, is where the motor is attached and also rod holders. And I will show it to you in more detail once I put the kayak down. I use a BMW X1 2016 to transport this. It's my wife's car. And in the back you have to put some kind of attachment so that when you lower the kayak it doesn't hit the uh, window and the rest of it in the back. So I've created my own little contraption. As you can see I use PVC pipes. And I use these clamps and I use this um, what is it, the glass type of holder thingy, which I cut in half and used each side like this. And I put a foam roller in the middle right here so that it rolls a little bit. It works well it, and the advantage is it's narrow, I mean it's wide and it's flat. And I also try to use this other one right here, which I'm going to return. It looks good on paper. But it's kind of narrow and the kayak tip tends to slide to the right because it's a little heavier on the right due to this motor installation um, thingy. But so I probably will return this. Here is how I hold the, uh, the wheels below the kayak, as you can see. And this is the description of this contraption for the motor, for the electric motor, which I will show you soon. So, this kayak had these two pre-drilled holes, uh, two on each side. I've, I went to Home Depot, I picked these L brackets, and also I picked the size of this bolt, little bolt. And as you can see, there was a little gap in here, so I put an extra knot in here. Overall, make sure that you are picking things like metal attachments and all these parts that are stainless steel they will not corrode don't buy zinc or anything of that sort now this bar 
is made of vinyl. I bought it at Lowe's and it comes in, a, I would say, probably eight feet length. It's close to an inch wide. And of course, the reason for vinyl is it does not rot and it's pretty strong. So I drilled these holes and also I got this regular, um, I believe at Home Depot, the PVC pipes and I drilled these two holes and I went through this bar as well and this is a nice thing here it allows the rod to stay stable because when you put one of the uh, rods in here the uh, it will pretty much hold in the same position now the middle one I installed recently and I had to put an extra bar in here because the distance between these two was too much it was higher than this and same on the other side plus I have a little bit extra I don't know how many inches you can calculate for yourself but it protrudes a little bit and this is where the motor is installed I use this little sticky padding thing is here but I will probably replace them soon as you can see they're not in the best shape this setup works very well I'm right-handed mostly <laughs> so when I ride I can reach this part I can open the motor I can pull it up and clean it from the weeds which I will show you soon and uh, that's pretty much how I did it all right since I'm talking about the whole setup I'll show you my life jacket it's uh, auto inflatable and also manual if necessary I bought it at West Marine I think for about a hundred bucks it's pretty good it doesn't prevent you from reaching or moving so I don't almost feel it so I highly recommend it it's pretty good I put this in the back of this seat up you'll see there is a compartment here behind the seat which is pretty large and I use it to put battery in for my motor which I'll show you later here's the box I use and this is a cover from that compartment as you can see there is a device attached that's a gauge it shows you battery capacity and voltage in here and it works pretty well the only thing is it does not um, show you the right values uh, at the time when you are active when the motor is on it will show you some junk numbers because the battery is being drained but the moment you stop and give it like let's say a minute it will come to its senses and it will show you what's actually in the battery the only thing is it took a little bit of time to figure out how to set it up correctly because it uses different measurements um, in the sense that it uses for different battery types you have to adjust it for the right battery that you have but they come with instructions they're not perfect but manageable on the other side of it you'll see this is how it's connected I have a switch in here which is like a two-way switch I attached uh, let's see if I can tell you the model of it just in case if you decide to buy exact same let's see so this is the switch and I hope you can see the model number MB-TS20 I believe so that's what I got so I have this connection coming from this device the gauge and also I have these clamps in here which are water waterproof and also I connect let me show you this is a little bit uh, in the state of a uh, little bit of fish let's see cleaned up this little wire mess uh, for you and let me show you how it's all connected so this device which is the gauge and I will post the model later um, in the description has two alligator clips at the end of each wire so the red is the positive the black is the negative as you can see and these are the two alligator clips it comes with it uh, actually no I'll take it back um, I bought this alligator clips and I attached it to the wires sticking out using this watertight uh, clamps I got at Home Depot now this is the switch which I, I modeled the, uh, the model I mentioned before I'll try to post it again in the description it has these two wires coming out 
so I connected them to this pump and the pump is a very very useful thing because you if you're on a kayak expect to be wet as most people know and you go even in the calm waters there is some boat coming through and it will create waves and the waves will go inside so your feet will be wet for sure uh, by the way i have special boots which i will show you later for that and also i got this pump which is this is the model i got it online i believe but maybe you can get it at um, west marina so now it has this opening so i bought this attachment at west marine and i had to bend it so i warmed it up and just bend it so it goes nicely over the kayak out into the water so the way it's connected is i connect these two black ones together and then i connect them to the negative on the battery i do the same with the reds here I connect them together and they then connect to the battery itself to the red to the positive and this one is un unused um, the there is an explanation in the manual why it's unused so this works perfect for me and I put it under the seat in the left corner behind me and if there is water I press that switch the other side and it pumps the water out in no time works great this is the battery I use for all of this it's this echo worthy and this is the information it's lithium ion phosphate 12 volt 30 amp hours works very very nicely and it pull it pulls my kayak uh, for let's say about three miles easy if not more so it's absolutely enough for the whole day of fishing going back and forth and back again um, for backup I use pedal drive my kayak comes with a pedal drive and so I always have it with me so in case if, if it runs out but it usually doesn't happen and the gauge I showed you before shows uh, when it's in not in the uh, kayak is not moving the gauge is showing you how much juice is left so it gives me some idea of if I make it back or not on the battery so that's my pretty much setup and in addition I use this rod holders which go right in here like this um, they're not bad the problem is they're a little bit too narrow in here so if I use one of these heavier rods when I drag uh, those are like behind when I throw these things give me a little bit of hard time to stick it inside so I would advise going for a bigger one, wider one. And here is my fish finder. Actually, it's the Lawrence hook, too, I believe, uh, if I take off the cover. But it's been good to me. I put it in here on the right side, close to me, like this. So when I sit, I can see it works well. And I put the transceiver right lens as you can see through one of those holes and it's on the bottom let me see if I can show you it's right here so it works pretty well this is the battery I use for the fish finder it's by Yak Attack it's a high quality battery there's not much inside here um, I'm not sure which model it is from the top of my head, but it's pretty small. This is the size of it compared to the main battery. You don't have to do it. You can potentially just use the main battery to power it. It's 12 volt, I believe, as well. But uh, I prefer this. I put it in the front compartment right in here. And I connect it to the wire here. I screw them together as you can see this one goes inside the kayak and comes out in here make sure it's waterproof I bought this um, thingies forgot the name of those but you can find them if you search for kayak and kind of hole drilling 
will be required so I think it's about an inch hole behind this but it's in a safe place it's above waterline so it should work for you as well so these are my water shoes they're pretty good put them on Amazon even in the summer I wear them um, unless it's really warm then I wear some you know one of those shoes that um, prevent your feet from the rocks but if it's kind of cold uh, I expect a lot of water and wear these ones and this is the motor the ultimate gadget here so um, this is the model it's uh, by water snake it pulls this kayak very nicely and this is a pretty heavy kayak I'd say when it's unloaded it's pretty close to I think a hundred pounds I'm not sure but um, it's not a light one and uh, I install it with these clamps like this right in here um, I use this to uh, the red and the um, black obviously to connect to the appropriate polarities on the battery and they just go into this compartment and I control the turns obviously with the motor it has two speeds one and two and it has neutral but it's not working when it's in the middle forward and reverse right here it doesn't catch many widths if it does there is a button here I push it and the motor goes up like this I can go horizontal and clean the widths usually they come out very very easily so that's my setup and it works for me Hope it's useful for you. Thanks.